it almost looks like they're trying to hit every demographic. They got La La Land, John Wick, Dirty mm-hmm. Dancing. So just recently, Lionsgate introduced a concept called Lionsgate Live, which they're offering free movies every Friday on YouTube with some of their biggest features like Dirty Dancing, Hunger Games, and La La Land, and I believe one other. And today I have the Pink Flamingo Network uh, with us on this this, uh, conversation to see what we think about that concept. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. How are you guys doing today? We're good. We're good. Uh, yeah, man, just trying to take in all of this, this new content and um, seeing what these companies are going to be introducing to us in the next couple of months, because I think it's it's not going to be temporary. It's going to be a long term thing that they they are introducing. Like I said, Lionsgate sent out a press release and, and, and they're doing, you know, free movies for the next couple of weeks. And my opinion is they will be testing the waters on how to drop content um, outside of the streaming services like netflix and disney plus they're probably testing the theater experience from home what are your thoughts on that yeah i completely agree i um i totally think that they're testing the waters um at first when i saw it i you know i I wanted better movies uh Mm -hmm. for the four that they picked out yeah but then i kind of understood i think they're testing the water out testing the waters out Almost like Disney Plus with Artemis Fowl. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll see. I, you know, I'm pretty excited by it. I think like, they got uh, Jamie Lee Curtis hosting too. Yeah, so it's like this whole like experience. They're going to have celebrities on. They're going to have YouTubers on. Uh, I be- I'm assuming they're going to have the chat available for people to maybe donate and uh, put questions up on the screen, things like that. But Yeah, that's yeah. big. Yeah, I think, I think what they're doing is like, you know, they're picking reputable films so people are aware of the brand but there's no risk right so they're not going to run it with you know their biggest project this year that didn't make it you know to theaters yet but they're trying to see how that interaction is are people going to share that experience on their social media are they going to be commenting how many viewers are they going to get because like i said we have the theater experience and we have the streamer which is similar to how we had rental experiences before where a movie would come out in theaters and then three months later it's on the streaming platform But what if they introduce something that says, okay, we can have a film that's, you know, you're spending $10, $11 at the theater that's going to drop today, Friday, but two weeks from now or three weeks from now, we're going to have it on a live stream on YouTube for $8, $7. You get what I'm saying? Um, So it's Mm -hmm. like that, it's that middle ground before it hits the streamers or, um, you know, or the indie films that they may not have enough budget to want to risk it. They'll put it on something like that. Yeah, I think that'll be big for the indie films. That'll work perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. The, if you look at the what films they did pick, um, yeah. it almost looks like they're trying to hit every demograph. They got La La Land, John Wick, Dirty mm-hmm. Dancing. Uh, what was the the first one that's coming out? Uh, Hunger uh, Games. Hunger Games. Yep. Yeah. So it looks like they're trying to appeal to a lot of people. So I do agree with that. But I have a question. Do you yeah. think it's going to work? Um, the problem is, is like you said, we these aren't things that are recent. <clears throat> All these films mm-hmm. have been seen so many times by most of us, so it's difficult to gauge what that in, uh, engagement should be because a lot of these people might see that promotion or that thing streaming, and it's like, am I going to really watch this live stream just to watch The Hunger Games when I can watch it on my own, or I've seen it already? I, I'm not really sure how they're going to be able to get as many people in there. Maybe they will. You know, people are bored. They might love Jamie Lee Curtis or they might love the the YouTubers that will be on there. So um, that's good branding purposes wise. But maybe their best bet should have been to pick one that was more recent or more popular in the recent couple months. Yeah, I agree. I mean, when I first heard of this, the first thing that came to my mind was like Knives Out. Yeah. Um, I thought that'd be like a which good is, pick. But- which would make sense mm-hmm. because she's hosting exactly yeah. right it would yeah. be perfect right but you know i do i do understand it it is risky and i think this will you know be a good indication on what's to come in the future yeah now i mean we're, we're both aware about the the articles coming out about amc's issues with um mm-hmm. you know losing money and what's going to happen for them how many theaters are going to have to close all that will continue for at least the next couple months because we're thinking about once everybody is sort of okay to go back, you're still going to have people afraid to be in in crowds. And I would assume that even though they're going to say business as usual, um, 
there will be specific companies that will not work the same. You know, they'll have yes. to they'll have to introduce something different. Whether that's going to be like it sounds weird, but putting up dividers between every two chairs, um, <laughs> or yeah. or or letting in or out groups at a specific, you know, one aisle at a time, whatever it might be. I think those things are very possible, but how quick will we get there and how quick will we get back to sold out theaters? Yeah, I completely agree. Like even if they do open up in the foreseeable future, um, there's going to be restrictions, like you say. Yeah. And it's going to, it's going to be a while for them to get, you know, a full pack crowd back in there. Because box office numbers were huge for Marvel, for example. We know they're going to break a billion usually, but it's, you know, there's not a Marvel film every month. You know, it's, it's going to be difficult for those theaters to go back in. And, you know, of course we have Black Widow coming up in November, I believe is the date that they gave us, but yeah, it's just, it's going to be a while before things get back to normal or before things are uh, back to normal enough to keep all these theaters open. Um, right. Luckily, like Marvel has Disney plus, mm-hmm. but you know, there's a lot of other companies and a lot of other, you know, movie companies that, uh, that aren't going to, they're not in good shape. And, uh, right. it's going to be a long time before they see, you know, something good happening. But now even you mentioned Disney plus, even Disney wasn't willing to risk dropping black widow on, on Disney plus, mm-hmm. which is kind of crazy. when you think about it, <laughs> I know it, they, it's they, hard too because I I I I hope they would you know I want yeah. them to but I kind of yeah. understand where they're coming from and they're definitely playing it safe with releasing Artemis Fowl right um but we'll see yeah it's it's you have to think about the risk I mean you know are all these studios gonna still be around I don't think so you know even Disney I feel like it's 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 a risky game because you know they put out all these you know, hundreds of millions of dollars for all these films to get filmed in advance and then to not get a return on that as expected every couple months as they were expecting normally. um, That's a huge problem. Yeah. I recently saw um, Netflix surpassed Disney too. Yeah. Um, That's, that's gotta be, you know, due to this pandemic. Um, They're already seeing a a dent in there. So they need to have something work out. Yeah, I know. Of course. And then you know, and then we have the other issue, which is when will the content stop? Things were slowing down and completely shut off when, like uh, mid March or something like that. So mm-hmm. <laughs> there's no one shooting usually right now. Uh, there's no one uh, doing rehearsals. There's no one casting actor. You know, they might be, but it's very difficult to do all those pre production con- uh, steps. So things are shut down for example, three months. At some point, we're going to not have something to look at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because I don't know what um other companies have like stored away, but right. I hope they do. We know Netflix does. That's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. But there's, you know, a lot of other studios don't. Right. And then, you know, you think about like the TV shows, you know, the sitcoms, all those things that like shoot a few months before or whatever, you know, those seasons will be pushed back. And then how does that tie into, you know, late night not having guests to come on and, and promote shows um or yeah, films, all that stuff it like it carries over because, you know, all entertainment is tied to some way or another, you know, radio stations. all yeah, that. You, Yep. You get that trickle down effect. Yeah. It, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's what I really want to talk about was that Lionsgate Live and, and to see what your thoughts were on that. We have potentially theaters going to slowly you know, trickle away from business. We have studios promoting uh, films on YouTube. You know, maybe we'll get the drive in surge back again. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we get that drive-in surge, and we're yeah. gonna see a lot of reruns in the meantime. Yeah, gotta binge watch old shows. Yep. You know, catch up on anything you can. It's gonna be a lot of that for a while. Yeah, no, definitely for sure. But that's about it. That's all I really wanted to talk about. Uh, you guys can find the guys at the Plain Flamingo Network in my description and on YouTube if you just search their name. Thank you for stopping by to talk about uh, the world of film and what's gonna happen in the near future. No, thank you for having me, guys. You guys have always been a true inspiration. You guys have been good friends, and uh, we really appreciate you guys having us. Awesome. Yeah, of course. We, we think the same. It's been awesome to to see what you've been putting together and, and all the content you guys have coming out. i um, looking forward to see what else you got coming. Thank you, guys. And don't forget to follow us on the Pink Flamingo Network. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to be notified of all our future videos. We do TV and movie reviews. We have music video reactions, and we have fun and games every now and then. Thank you for watching.